Hey everyone, welcome back to the Rich Mind Podcast. Super excited that you joined me here today. So quick question, how many of you are allowing self-doubt interfere with moving forward and progressing in life? If you're anything like me, uh, self-doubt has been something to try to get beyond more times than not, meaning it's you have an opportunity, you have some different things you need to make a decision on, and you allow that doubt, worry, and fear inside of you really keep you from making the decision needed and the action that you need to take to get to the next level of your life. So if that has been you, which I raised my hand, I've been there as well. Today, I've got uh, three different things that I want to share with you, some different ideas, some of the things that I've done personally that have helped me when I come across this self-doubt that has kept me from really achieving a whole lot. Now, when I've discovered and what I've done and acted upon the things I want to share with you today, many things have changed. I've had the ability to accomplish so much more in a relatively short period of time, and that's what I want for you moving forward. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in learning more about, how to uh, get beyond this self-doubt and to accomplish more in your life, well, this episode could be exactly what you're looking for. I appreciate you being here. So without further ado, let's jump into the episode. In order to live an extraordinary and abundant life, you must focus on your internal battle and win within. My name is Randy Wilson, and welcome to the Rich Mind Podcast. Hello, and welcome back to the Rich Mind Podcast. Today, let's talk about doubt, worry, and fear. Those are three thieves that are keeping you, keeping me, keeping us away from a future that we desire. And I speak from personal experience. Uh, so many times I've made decisions or I haven't made decisions based on doubt, worry, and fear. And I've talked about them in previous episodes, but I just recently have had a conversation uh, with someone that was actually bringing up some different topics, different ideas, some things that I wanted to share with you today, uh, things that I thought of that were, could be and have been beneficial for me. It's like how I've worked through some of the doubt, worries, and fear that I've got in my life. And I want to share those things with you today. There are actually three different things that I think could help you when you come across doubt, worry, and fear. So where does, where does it really even come from? It really, in my opinion, it comes from an anxiety or a wish or a desire for a different future. And the issue with that a lot of times is that we don't know what that is. We don't know what the outcome could be. We don't exactly know what we need to do as far as the how. I've said that in the previous episodes as well. Sometimes we get stuck with worrying about the how how are we going to do certain things? Uh, and because of that, not understanding what the how could be, we just don't make any progress. We don't step forward, don't step into this future that we truly, truly want. So a few things that I've had, and maybe even just a little bit of a story of back when I made the decision, uh, many, it's been many years ago now, but it's a story that's fresh in my mind. It's something I think about all the time, but it required a lot of courage. And so that's what I want to do today is I want to encourage you to discover some of the courage inside of you, uh, based on this story and then breaking through some of that doubt, worry and fear. So this was back in 07, 08, as you've probably heard in my stories in the past. And if you haven't, I'll try to keep this brief, but I was in a retail position that I thought was the, I thought that was going to be it. I thought that that was my career path. I thought that it was going to be where I stayed and worked uh, for this single company basically until the end of my time working. I was willing to do that and I was doing a pretty good job at it. Uh, meaning, the, I think I was. Uh, I was getting feedback from my uh, superiors and my bosses, right? Anyways, I was in a position I was doing pretty well. And what happened was that they made me quickly realize that I wasn't in control of my life, that they 100% were in control of my life. They were making decisions uh, on my behalf that were not in my best interest by thinking and closing stores and relocating me and my family. It was just, it was a challenging, challenging time. 
which stirred up a whole lot of doubt, worry, and fear because I didn't know exactly what was going on. I was certain that I was going to stay in that spot and keep doing what I was doing because that's what I had always done. I was doing what I was told to do, meaning as I was growing up, my father encouraged me at the time to do what I exactly what I was doing. Stay with the one company, work as hard as you can. You'll climb up the corporate business ladder and eventually you'll get to this place, this some odd place where you get to retire. And what I found out is that was not true whatsoever, which like I mentioned, it created a bunch of doubt, worry, and fear because it challenged every belief, every thought, every thing that I had come to believe was true. I realized that it wasn't and it quickly threw me in a tailspin of, uh, just a lot of mess, a lot of mess in my own mind. But what I did is I made the decision that I was going to not allow that to ever happen to me ever again. Uh, the not being in control of my own life, not being able to make my own decisions. Uh, I was allowing other people. And at this point it was this company make decisions based for me, right? They were, they were making decisions on my behalf and I was not allowing, I was never going to allow that to happen again. So the question I have for you today uh, to kind of tie that story into maybe where you are today, are you in a situation in your life where you aren't in control? It can be a relationship. It can be a position or a job. It can be really anything. Are you in a, in a situation or in an environment where you're not in control? Meaning you don't have the autonomy to make decisions for yourself that are going to improve uh, your current situation. Now, the one thing I learned from a mentor uh, and David Nagel, and I've mentioned David's name several times, and if you're not following David, I highly recommend that you do so. If, if you find my content uh, valuable, you're going to find David's valuable as well. But one thing he has always said that I, it really resonated with me was that our greatest gift is our ability to choose. We all have choice, whether we stick, whether we stay, whether we move on, whether we choose to think differently, whether we choose to try to have a different thought, uh, challenge the beliefs that we have, uh, challenge the, the relationships that we might be in. Our ability to choose is our greatest gift. And I, I hold that to be very accurate. Uh, my ability at that moment, back when I was going through my turmoil, my ability to make different decisions allowed me then to break free from that negative experience and that's what I want to encourage you today is number one, realize that your ability to choose is your greatest gift. So you have a choice. You have a choice right now. You have a choice to be listening to me right now. And I appreciate you doing so. You have a choice as soon as you get off of this episode to make different decisions moving forward. And it's those series of decisions is what's going to impact the results that you get in your life, whether or not you need to move on from a situation or you need to maybe even possibly engage further in a situation. I don't know exactly what circumstances you're dealing with, but the point is, is that you have the ability to make the decision. You have the ability to choose. And if you take that and take it seriously, your future is really whatever you choose it to be. So even if you're in a negative situation, because as I mentioned before in my story, mine was a negative situation. So let's say you're in a negative situation. What is it that you need to do? And that's where you, the doubt, worry, and fear kicks in because you're not 100% sure. You're not 100% sure. And I get that because that's exactly where I was as well. So the first step is to make a decision. You need to decide. Okay, Your ability to choose is your greatest gift. You need to decide that you're not going to stay in that situation or you're going to engage more in that situation, whatever the choice is. Right? I know we're kind of talking about maybe a negative situation mostly today. But the idea is your ability to choose. You need to make a decision that this is not acceptable. I made it, it, it. There was no way I was going to allow that to happen to me ever again. Back when that was happening to me in 07 and 08, when they were closing my store and, and basically disrupting my whole life, disrupting my family. Yeah, that was not acceptable. And I, I made the decision right then that was not going to happen to me ever again. If it was in my ability, it wasn't going to happen. So that's what I'm asking you to do. Come up with your line in the sand moment that you are not going to allow that to ever happen. And then the next thing I did back then, I didn't really even realize I was doing it, but this is what I would like for you to think about in your quest or in your process of where you are, 
is visualize. I want you to visualize what it is that you really want. Now, I struggle with that question all the time. Uh, I get asked or I hear that question, what is it that you want? And I, I struggle to come up with an answer with that. So one thing I heard even just in the last week, maybe 10 days ago, that really it was a little bit softer statement, meaning it was it it felt better to me to hear it this way. And I want to share that with you right now. It was that instead of what is it that you truly want, it's what is it that you would really love? And sit with that for a moment. That to me was a lot easier to absorb. That was a lot easier for me to mm, think about, right? Let those let that thought kind of wander in my mind. What is it that I would really love? And I would like for you to sit with that as well, because when you start asking yourself that question and you allow yourself to go down the different trails of figuring out what it is that you would really love, you'll start to visualize, you'll start to see this brighter future that you are really hoping and truly trying to get to, right? We need to figure out exactly the direction that we are headed. You might not know all the steps, and I understand that. I didn't know all the steps from where I was to where I am today. And I still don't know. I'm no, I'm nowhere near where I want to be. But the point is, is that I've been able to make progress based on number one, I made the decision. And then number two, I visualized exactly what I wanted to do. And mine was a lot about time freedom. I was working retail, as I mentioned, and I, I was working literally 24 hours a day, seven days a week, including holidays. I mean, we were never even closed. Uh, it was a struggle. It was a challenge. And I just wanted time freedom. And so that's what I, I've been able to get for myself. Um, I, I basically choose day to day what I'm doing. Very seldom do I have a day where I'm not in charge and, and responsible for my activities, my calendar, what I'm doing, when I'm doing it, who I'm doing it with. That's what I wanted. And so what is it that you want? Sit with that and think about what it is that you want and get a real crystal clear vision for that. So then once you get crystal clear on your vision, after you visualize exactly what it is that you want your life to become, you're going to begin getting some ideas coming to your mind. You're going to be having some awarenesses come into your life. I talk about awarenesses a lot. I've had a lot of interviews in the last few weeks, uh, and hopefully you're enjoying those interviews, by the way. If, if, uh, if you are, I would appreciate some feedback. I would love to hear what your thoughts are. Uh, that was a side note, but anyways, uh, you need to become aware of where you are. You need to become aware of where you want to go. So I'm not sure if you've ever heard the story of the, the boiling frog story, meaning <laughs> it's, it's an interesting story, but I kind of, I think it kind of relates to what we're talking about today. So the boiling frog story is that if you place a frog in a pot of water, and you gradually increase the temperature, not fast, gradually. That frog won't have the intuition to jump out of the pot, meaning it will just continuously allow the temperature to rise to the point where at some point it will be cooked. It will be dead. It will be non-existent. And I know that might be a little bit of a harsh story, but the point is, is that if you don't become aware of your surroundings, he was not aware of his surroundings to the point where it eventually killed him. And that is what I don't want for you today. You need to become aware. So when you're being triggered with certain certain circumstances, like if somebody says something to you and it triggers an emotion or triggers a feeling of something happens in your environment and you're triggered, where is that coming from? That's trying to guide you in a certain direction. You know internally where you need to be. You know internally which direction you need to go. But if you are consciously not aware of those feelings going on within you, it's going to be very difficult to make the decisions needed to take the action needed to get yourself away, away from or into that better circumstance. So that's been a challenge for me. And that's really the, the whole premise of the Rich Mind podcast is doing that internal work, meaning the thoughts, the feelings, uh, where are they coming from? Temperature changes within your body, uh, just different physical things that are going on in your mind. They could be headaches. They could be, uh, as I mentioned, sweats. They could be many, many different things. You could just be emotional. Where is that coming from? To me, that's something inside of you, your internal being, trying to give you 
a guidance, give you a sign of what either is right or what is possibly wrong. Now, if you get excited about something, if you're giddy excited about something, that's just as good. It's just on the opposite spectrum of, of the scale as far as being positive and negative. Excitement, and being super excited and being happy and joyful, that's positive emotions, right? But when you're having the negative emotions bringing you down and you're not aware of them, that's the point I want you to become today is become aware of them. When you see them, it, as I, I said this in the episodes in the past as well, it's almost like an outer body experience. It's like you'll start, you're, you're living in the moment, you're having the situation happen, you'll get triggered, and then all of a sudden you'll be like, you'll just be witnessing and watching and thinking and wondering. And it's just, it's an interesting experience, at least it has been for me. And so what I would encourage you to do is try to be really calm and present in that moment. Focus on what is going on and determine where you are in that moment. Because when you become aware and you realize that the triggers and the emotions and all of that is, is a sign of a different direction that it's trying to take you in, then with this visualization, with, with this decision that you've already made, the visualization that you're working towards, you will then be able to break free from these emotions, break free from these negative environments that are holding you captive. They're holding you trapped, thinking that you can't move forward, which begins or which keeps on with the doubt, the worry, and the fear. You've got to break free from them. And the easiest and the best way that I've been able to do that is through making the decision, having the visualization, and then becoming aware of my surroundings. So that way you can have the last part of it is to have the courage. You need to have courage to step away from or step into something that you're not sure what the outcome is going to be. When I left uh, a W-2 job, when I stepped out into this entrepreneurial world, I didn't know what was going to happen. I had no idea. I mean, you can listen to people all day long. You can listen to me all day long. And I can try to tell you what my experience has been, but your experience is going to be different than mine. So what happens is that you get that doubt, the worry, and the fear because you're not sure what that's going to be for you. But it requires courage. You have to have enough courage. You've had to have had enough experiences to step into something of the unknown. Now, I'm not saying be reckless. That's not what I'm saying at all. I had a, a mapped out plan of what I needed to have done prior to me making that decision and prior to me making that final decision of stepping away. And I executed that plan. And that's what I, uh, that's probably for another episode. Maybe we can go into that in the future. But the point is, is that I had a plan. I made the decision. I had the vision. And then I realized and I was aware of my situations as I was becoming triggered. And through that awareness, I began to make a plan of an execution for me to get out of that environment that I was in. And then I executed and I made it work. And has there been some challenges? Of course. Am I learning every day? Of course. But the point is, is that I am now feeling like I am in charge. I am responsible for my outcomes. Now I can make different decisions at any moment. But now that I've done it for this situation that I had a few years back, I'm more confident in myself now moving forward. And that's what I think it will be for you as well. You start building some confidence in yourself, in your abilities. Uh, and then so that way when the next situation comes up, and it will, you're going to be more confident, more willing, more able to step into who you want to be. What is it that you would truly love? I love, I love saying that ever since I've discovered that in the last couple of weeks. I think about that all the time now. It's like, what would I really love? And that's what I would like to ask you today. What is it that you would really love? We need to have courage. I want to encourage you to step away and step into the doubt, the worry, and the fear. That's the only way for it to get and for it to go away. You need to make a decision. You need to visualize what you want. You need to become aware of your situation of your situation and your, your circumstances. And then you need to have some courage, some courage that w it will work out. It has worked out for me and it's worked out for a lot of others. Don't get down on yourself, blaming, uh, wondering and worrying about the past. The past is nothing more than your imagination. You need to let that go. We can learn from the past, but we don't need to live in the past. Let your past go. Let's move into the future. And the only thing we have control of is actually today, right now, this moment. 
We can make a decision in this moment that's going to impact the future. And we can use the past, like I said, as a kind of a, a reflection of kind of the direction of what we can and can't do or what we should or shouldn't do. But don't live there. Don't stay in the past. Don't blame yourself. Don't blame others. It just it just is. Those situations, they just are and they just happened. It's time to move forward. We've all had bad things happen. I have. I'm sure you have as well. But it's time to have some courage Take the steps that I've mentioned today and step into a future that is going to be better than you can ever imagine. And that's what I want for you moving forward. So hopefully you found this message valuable. I haven't done a solo episode here in a little while, but this was on my heart today. It was something that, as I mentioned, I was having a little bit of a discussion with someone uh, just the other day. And this is how I worked through the situation for myself. And I'm hoping that with this message today, you can kind of take the ideas that I'm sharing and internalize it for yourself, for your circumstance. I get it. Yours is going to be different than mine. But the idea is that just learn from and try to take action in a different way, maybe than what you're currently doing and get a different result because with a different result, then you can make a different decision and then you'll just keep moving forward. Don't get worried about the how you, the how will show up as you continue to step into this brighter future for yourself. So go out there have a fantastic day. I look forward to coming back with some more solo episodes. As I mentioned, I've I've kind of gone off and having so, a lot of uh, interviews, which are fantastic. I love uh, engaging with other people. But one thing I love to do on the podcast is to get on here just like I am today, look into this camera and talk to you about uh, what's going on with me, uh, some of the stories and some of the things that I've been working on. And hopefully then they will resonate with you. Hopefully they can help you moving forward. So go out there. Have a great day. We're going to wrap this one up here today. I appreciate your time and attention. And until I come back with the next episode again very soon, until then, bye now. Thank you for joining me on the Rich Mind Podcast. And remember, your external world is a reflection of what's going on inside of you. So focus every day on that internal battle and win within. Until next time, my friends.